Hello there, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing Darlings and Duds for the months of January and February. And I feel like I have a lot less products to share with you today because I was on a no buy for the month of January. So I did get two PR packages during that month, but otherwise I was being really good, trying to use things that are in my collection. And then February rolled around and yeah, I went a little nuts. So if you're not familiar with my version Version of these videos, I just share with you the new products that I have been testing out over the last two months and put a stamp of either darling, meaning I love it, or a stamp of dud on it, meaning I would recommend you pass. So if you're new here, be sure you hit that subscribe button and now let's get started. Today I've decided to begin with face products. So I have a couple powders I've been testing out and the first one is Nikia Joy's pressed version of her velvet finishing powder and I have used and loved the loose version of this and I was excited when she came out with the pressed version to see if it differed at all and I would say the formulation is pretty much the same it's just the convenience of a pressed version this one still smells like golden Oreos you know I love that smell and it does have a little compartment here if you can find the little lip and it comes with a black sponge now what I have particularly been loving this powder for is for touch-ups throughout the day it does also work to set my makeup but I find especially because it's a pressed version I really love this as a touch-up powder so it's definitely getting a darling stamp for me the other powder that I've been testing out is one that's been around for a long time and I was watching a makeup artist repeatedly use this powder and I thought I need to try that and Too Faced had a sale so I decided to give it a shot and this is the Too Faced Born This Way Ethereal Setting Powder. It's translucent, you get a ton of product. It has a locking sifter so it keeps it nice and clean so you could travel easily with this and I've actually really been enjoying this powder. I feel like it's a good in-between. It's not so mattifying that your skin looks dry but it's also not so moisturizing to where I feel like I need to repowder in an hour. Now this is what I use to set my makeup today and it's been at least probably four hours since I did that and I feel like my skin is staying nice. It's not overly oily. I have a little hint of kind of some natural glow but it's nothing crazy. So an all-around really good setting powder that I would definitely recommend. Now something that I've been testing out that's just not been working out for me is the new Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer. That's why it's in the box. It is going back to Sephora. I have tried this under multiple foundations. I've also tried kind of mixing it up with a different sunscreen on top of or underneath. And I just, this is just not a good primer for me. It does make your skin initially look really nice and smooth. It's a slightly blurred look, but it doesn't feel super silicone-y like their Mineral Veil Primer does. But the thing that I just don't love about this is that it doesn't do anything as far as providing any longevity of wear of my makeup. And also once I put my foundation on, I feel like within a very short amount of time, maybe about an hour, I don't feel like my skin looks blurred, that my pores or lines look any better. So for the price of this, I just don't feel like this is a win. So it's going in the dud category and going back to the store. Now, another primer that I've been testing out at the opposite end of the price spectrum is this e.l.f. Power Grip Primer. And this is supposed to be like the milk gripping primer. I have that. And honestly, I feel like this has more grip power than the milk one does. I have felt it improves the wear time and the performance of foundations that I know need a primer. Now, having said that, I don't like this under every foundation. 
but that's just me personally. I don't like a primer under every foundation, but I've used this with the Smashbox Studio Skin Foundation. This is a foundation that performs so much better when it has a primer with it, and this one has performed well. So definitely giving this one a darling stamp. Now I feel like for face products, I tried a lot of new blushes lately. I've just been into extra color on the cheeks apparently. So I purchased this one from the Boxy Pop-Up Store and this is the Laura Mercier blush in Cur Royale. Oh my word, this is the most beautiful plum rose shade. The formulation is super smooth. It goes on and blends well. So I have really enjoyed this blush. Another one that I purchased, I got the small version of the Balms Hot Mama blush, and I have wanted to try this for years. And I feel like every time I would see it in, it used to be in Kohl's, they used to sell balm there. And I feel like every time I swatched it, I was like, eh, that's too glowy, eh, I probably won't like it. This blush is one of those that you've just gotta put on your cheeks. It is so smooth, first of all, even though it does have a lot of shine and sheen, there's no glitter particles. Now this one is similar, you would think it's similar looking here as the famous blush by NARS. However, I find this one actually looks better on my cheeks than that one does because this doesn't have any sparkle in it. So really super flattering and see on my finger even, it doesn't look like it's gonna do anything but that gold and peachy pink shade just gives the cheeks a really nice healthy glow. Definitely a darling. Now these next three blushes, yes, three blushes. I'm telling you, there's something about cheek colors that was really attractive to me this month. This one is from Kiko Milano, and this brand in a limited quantity is sold on Ulta's website. The packaging, first of all, is always beautiful. And this is more in the drugstore end of things. It's the pricier side of drugstore, but it's in the more drugstore end but look at this blush duo. Is that not just so pretty? So this blush is called Sweet Affairs Duo Cocoa Blush, and this is the shade Ruby Cocoa. On the Ulta website, this looked quite a bit deeper than it is in person. So I was really concerned when I swatched this pink and I thought, that is not gonna show up on me or it's gonna show up really chalky. And when I bought it online, I thought that glowy blush, I don't know that I'm gonna love that. Oh my goodness, I actually love this even more than the matte side of it. But the combination of these two, you can see how glowy and shiny that is. That is what I have on the top part of my cheek over another blush that I'm gonna share with you today. So this glow that you are seeing right here is from this blush. And it is the most beautiful, I'll put a little bit here, it just melts into the skin and oh my goodness, it doesn't highlight texture and it does have that hint of pink, but it just makes this, the cheeks look so healthy. And when I paired the two together, I get a really nice kind of baby soft pink look and I've just been so impressed. Now the other blush that I'm wearing underneath is one of the new shades from Patrick Ta. This is She's Blushing and I did show this in a recent video and I told you I wasn't quite sure if the color was distinctly different enough from another one I own. I'll show you that in a moment. But these blushes have a powder and a cream blush. The cream is securely covered under this nice little plastic, hard plastic cover. This color is such a pretty kind of natural, neutral rose shade. And this powder side does have a little bit of glow, just a little bit, it's like a satin finish. And then the cream portion doesn't have any shimmer or anything. And the way that he recommends you use it is to do the powder first and then tap on a little cream blush. And I normally do that. However, today I just used a little bit of this and then I tapped on 
the glowy pink blush from here and I love that color combination. Now, for reference, the She's So LA, I'll show you side-by-side -side comparison there. So you can see a difference here, but I tried them on my cheeks. I did one on one side, one on the other, and it's really hard to see the difference. So if you already own this, you probably don't need this, but if you don't own either one, if you like one that's slightly more rosy, then go with She's Blushing. The other shade in his new color range that I purchased was one of the shades that was in a trio of blushes available at Christmas time that kept going out of stock. And I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna let it go. And then lo and behold, he produced each one of those colors in an individual form. And so this color, I know it's really super bright pink, but it's really pretty. And I feel like this is one that I'm going to be using even more as I go into spring and summer. But what I've really enjoyed doing is mixing like a little bit of this cream blush with the powder blush from She's Blushing or vice versa. So you can mix and match each of them. So if you're in the market for a new blush, I would recommend checking out those blushes. Now it's time for a couple of dud cheek products. <laughs> this first one came in a boxy charm. I think it was the January boxy charm. It's Jekka Black Play Pot. It's supposed to be for eyes, lips, and cheeks. So I was really excited. I saw this color and I thought, oh my goodness, that's so pretty. Well, there's a couple of issues with this. So eyes, cheeks, lips, that's always a tough type of product to do anyway, because Generally, it's probably either going to dry out the lips and cheeks if it's a dry down product, or it's going to move and shift on your eyes if it's a kind of moisturizing type product. Well, that's the case with this. It never sets, and because it never sets, you really don't wanna put it on your eyes because it will just continue to just wipe off. So. I thought, well, how about the cheeks and lips? Well, the problem there is, can you see the huge chunks of glitter in here? It's just not a flattering look on the cheeks. And on the lips, it just really doesn't feel super comfortable. It doesn't stay put. So, sorry, this is just a dud for me. The other product, isn't all that bad. I was just disappointed in it and I do have a whole video on this collection. So I'm not gonna go into detail here, um, but I have this, the eyeshadow palette and one of the lip products. So check out that video. I'll link it up here and down below, but this is the Too Faced Too Femme collection. I'll let you check out that video. There's a lot of information in there. So I did try out a few little eyeshadow palettes this time. Apparently, that was what I was gravitating towards this month was little tiny eyeshadow palettes. So the first one, again, I did do a whole video on this, but it is one of the Clinique duos and it is the one that is 20 Jammin'. And in that video, I show you a two shadow look. I was doubtful that I could really get a two shadow look that I would actually really enjoy. Cause you know, I'm a little more dramatic many times with my eyes, but I actually was super impressed. The formulation on these shadows is perfect. It's smooth and buttery, but it's not powdery. So you get the pigmentation you need and you don't have to work too hard to get it. Both of these have a little more of a satin finish, and yet I feel like they're super flattering on mature eyes. Definitely a darling. I just wish they were a little less expensive. Now, as we get into the other four little mini eyeshadow palettes, I do have a combination of them on my eyes today, so I'll try to share with you which shadows I'm wearing. So the first two palettes are from Essence, and they released a couple more color combinations. You know I've shown several of the others before, but this first one is My Rose Will Go On. You know I had to get it, right? I love these pink shades. I have a little bit of this through my crease, 
And I have a little bit of this. This is one of my favorite colors in here. I have a little bit of this on top of another shadow on the lid and then in the inner corner. This is what I'm wearing. This shade right here that looks matte actually has a tiny little bit of a sheen and I put that right here under the arch of my brow and it's just perfect for that. The others in here, the let's see, there are three mattes across the top and then two full-on shimmers and then this kind of more satin one. This one also is beautiful. I will, by the way, put swatches up on the screen so you can see what this looks like. But overall, this is my favorite new one of the two of these. Just loving the color combo, of course. The other one I picked up is Nothing Compares to Nude. And again, I love this color combo. It's very soft. The only thing I wish is this one is a shimmer shade. So the deepest shade in this palette really isn't deep enough to add that dimension that I personally want in the outer corner or the crease. And because it's not matte, it's just not one I'm going to use like that. So this palette isn't an all-in-one kind of palette for me, but I've enjoyed pulling it in and pairing it with other palettes. I wouldn't pay $25 for it, but I will certainly pay three to $4 for it and be happy to do so because I do think these are really good quality. The other two eyeshadow palettes, I know you are not at all going to be surprised that I had to jump on the bandwagon and I think one of these was the reason why I cut my January no buy short by three days. <laughs> these are the two releases from Natasha Denona. So she came out with the mini Biba and I do own the full size Biba palette. And so I thought, I wonder how this is going to compare to that. So let's go there first. I decided I might as well just pull it out so you could see. So this is the overall color scheme and I think it goes well and it is slightly different. I mean, the tones of the peach and this shade, they have a little more pink to them versus this one over here. I feel like this shimmer shade is real similar to this one. And then you've got your kind of darker matte browns in here, right there. And so I feel like if you own the big version, you're probably not gonna find this one to be super different, but it's just, there's something about having that nice little tiny palette to travel with or just pull out when you're in a hurry. And so I do have several of these shades on today. I have a little bit of this mixed with the pink in my crease. And then I have this underneath that shade from the rose palette on my lid. And then this is the shade that I use to darken up the lash line and the outer corner. So overall, great quality. I do highly recommend the other one from Natasha Denona that you know I had to purchase was this Crush palette. Now this is limited edition, so I don't even know if it's still out. It did come with a free brush. I saw this and you know my love for purples and pinks, right? But I thought, I wonder how it compares to the Mini Love palette, which is one of my loves. And here's the Mini Love. So I would say the Mini Crush has similarities. I would say the Mini Crush is more of the warm purples, the warm pinks, and you are missing this beautiful bright shade that is my all-time favorite shade from Natasha Denona. So I feel like that's what's missing from this palette is that brightening shade for the inner corner. So this is not a one and done palette for me personally, but that aside, there are three really nice mattes and then these two shimmers. This is a fun kind of topper shape. It can be really full on pink if you pack it on, but I've had a lot of fun with this palette. These all do perform well. Another great love, a darling. I would definitely recommend if these are your kinds of colors. Now the other eyeshadows I have to share with you are individual liquid shadows. They are the Kosas 10 second eye colors and I do have a full dedicated review on these and a demo. I put myself on a clock to see if we can really do it in 10 seconds. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but 
I'll just say if you have seen reviews on Sephora's website or other reviewers, they are all over the place with these. Some people hate them. Some people love them. I don't have any experience with their previous formulation, so I can't speak to that. But I found that these, if you're looking for a soft shimmer shadow that can do kind of basically be one shadow look or one or two, and you work quickly one eye at a time and you put them over an eyeshadow primer, which is how I always use eyeshadow, I found these to be very nice. Now, if you're expecting them to, to be like the Stila liquid shadows, then you'll be disappointed because they are not that super full on metallic look when you put them on. And if you try to wear them that way, I think that's when people run into problems. But if you just put them on and sheer them out, you can layer them a couple times and build them up a little bit. But I think if you wear them like that, they're really beautiful. So like I said, check out my other video review so you can see full swatches of all three of these colors. I have one liner I've been recently testing out. It's the Natasha Denona Macro Blade Liquid Liner. And I'm kind of surprised that I've actually grown to like this <laughs> because the felt tip on this, even though it does come to a super fine point, it's not as flexible as I'm used to. So there is still a little bit of stiffness here. So it's stiffer than the KVD Tattoo Liner, which is still, by the way, my favorite over the two. But what I love about this one is it is such a deep, dark black. Do you like that like crooked line? <laughs> if I can draw something straight. The color really does flow out of the pen nicely, so you don't have to work at all to get it onto your line. And it is the deepest black of any liquid liner that I own. It does set down and stay well. I do find at the end of the day, if I do a very dramatic wing, I do have, I can have a little bit of cracking along the line. If you've done liquid liner, you know what I'm talking about. So it's not the best that I've ever used as far as that goes, but otherwise I haven't found that it travels towards my inner corner or that it runs off or smudges off during the day. So this is in my darlings group, but I do still feel like I prefer the KVD one or the It Cosmetic Superhero liner just a smidge more. One brow product that I've actually been really loving is the Merit, and this is a brow pomade is I think what they've called it. And this is the shade Blonde. Um, I don't know that I would call it blonde. It looks more taupe to me, but I think the combination of the color and the formulation of this is just perfect for me. I am wearing this through my brows today over the top of my NYX Precision Brow Pencil in taupe. And several of you have commented on my brows recently saying, I really like the color. What are you doing different? I think this is it. So this is supposed to be a one and done brow product. It's not for me. And if you're somebody with sparse brows, you know what I'm talking about. I, I just don't care how many fibers are in a brow gel. It's just never gonna be one and done for me. However, I feel like this does provide enough texture and just that little added oomph that my brows need. So I have really been enjoying this. And by the way, I do have several other products that Merit sent me as well that I am in the process of testing out. So watch out for that video coming soon. The last eye product I have to share with you is a mascara. It's by Calaray. And this was a huge surprise. I got this as a free sample. So this is a mini version. But I need a tubing mascara. I found that that works best for me on my lower lashes. Almost everything else smudges on me. But this, I found, did not smudge at all. And I think it was the second day I wore it. It was a bad day. And it was a day that I had a lot of tears. And I don't cry very often. So when I do cry, I'm used to having, you know, mascara just seeping off the ends of my eyes or whatever. I had nothing. I had no flakes, no smudges, no runs. 
nothing. So this has held up so well. And because it's a tubing mascara, it's not as hard to get off as waterproof. I will say though, it's a little more difficult to get off than the Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions. But I've really been impressed and definitely plan to buy the full size. Our last category are lips. And I do have actually several products here. Surprise, surprise. So Ilya sent me this new lip product. This is a brand new product for them. It's called Lip Wrap Reviving Balm. So it is just a clear lip nourishing product. This tip is actually very cooling. So when you put this on your lips, you feel just a really nice soothing sensation. And then the balm in here is so good. I was really surprised. I used this a couple of times overnight. That is really my test of a good lip balm to see if there's anything left on my lips in the morning. And there was. And it really has some amazingly good ingredients. It has a nourishing blend of emollient butters and prickly pear oil to quench lips on contact. So the skincare actives of hyaluronic acid and C succulent, I won't pronounce the scientific name, <laughs> visibly plump and help boost hydration. And I would say yes to all of those claims. So if you're looking for a really good nourishing balm, and I've really kind of been using this in the evening as I am just kind of, you know, after dinner, but before I get ready for bed, this has just been a really nice treatment for dry lips. Another big surprise that has been a wonderful treatment for my lips are these Too Faced, what are these even called? Hangover Pillow Balm Lip Treatments. So I got these in a set, I think right after Christmas, they were on clearance, but I didn't really start testing them out till January. And oh my goodness, this formulation is so good. Now, I don't think you can still get this little kit. If so, I'll link it below. But I do believe that they sell at least this color. This is kind of the original. It's almost clear. How It looks like it's a little milky pink, but this I think they sell in full size. But this formulation is really like none other. It's a combination of kind of a buxom plumping gloss. So it does have that slight peppermint tingle, but it doesn't stay pepperminty tingly. It's not painful tingly, but the texture of it is like a thick gripping balm that isn't too tacky, but it's not too slippery. It does stay on your lips a long time. I don't know. I've really been impressed by these. Now, another Too Faced lip product. This seemed to have come out, I think, right before the Too Femme collection, but I just didn't get around to really testing it out until last month. And it's one of their new Lady Bold lipsticks. And I purchased the shade Trailblazer. I was trying to break myself out of my nude lips category because, you know, I've got a lot of lipsticks and I have a lot of nude lip colors because that's what I tend to wear. <laughs> so this shade is actually pretty deep. It is a deep kind of brown berry color. It's really beautiful, but the formulation, wow. I mean, let me just swatch like without effort, smooth, super pigmented, and very long wearing, and yet it stays comfortable. Now on my lips right now is a new favorite, and I talked about this in my recent products that was love at first sight. And I showed you what happened when I pulled this product out of the box. So these are brand new from Merit and they did send these to me. And when I pulled it out of its box, I was like, oh my word, these are beautiful. So these are called Signature Lip and they're lightweight lipsticks. And I really feel like that's the only description you really need. They're lightweight and yet long wearing. I am currently wearing the shade Baby, which is my favorite of the two. Big shocker, got a nude pink there, but just 
smooth formulation. Really great ingredients in these lipsticks. The other shade that was sent to me is 1990. I'm a 1990s girl. I loved the brownie tones of the 90s. This one I feel like is a little more on the yellow brown side, so it's not my favorite color, but the formulation's still good. More darlings in the lip category. Two MAC lipsticks that I recently picked up. It's been a while actually since I've purchased some new MAC lip colors. And this first one, again, was in a recent video. It's Fresh Moroccan. So this is a color that's been around for a while, but it's a beautiful kind of brownish red with some gold in there. So it has some gold reflex, and that's what I feel like I love about this the most. It's not a flat red or just kind of an all-out cream red. That gold in it, I think, makes it much easier to wear, much more flattering, and it gives it a little more of a neutral twist. And then the other one is the color, thanks, it's MAC. <laughs> I just thought that was the funniest name. But this is one of their sheerer formulas. So I really wanted to try it, and it does have a lot of shine, and it's a nude pink kind of color, at least on me but I've really enjoyed it. And of course, if you're not familiar with how MAC lipsticks smell, that's another thing that gets me every time. I love that light vanilla scent. The final products were sent to me from e.l.f. in that package, and we've got a darling and we've got a dud. So let's start with the dud so that we finish out this video on a high note. The dud for me are these new, I don't even know what they're called. I'll put the name of them on the screen. They are supposed to be kind of like a, a glossy lipstick, kind of lightweight product. And from that aspect, they kind of are. When I first tested these out from the feel and the consistency of them, I was like, oh my word, I got excited because I thought, that e.l.f. had duped one of my favorite unique formulas from Lancome, and that is the Absolute Glosses. I'll put the name of these on, but these are so unique. They are a gloss and a stain all in one, and the formulation goes on much the same. It feels almost like water, and it is a very light, refreshing, cooling sensation on the lips. But what these do, the Lancome ones, they dry down and set, and then you can layer them up like three times, building up the color. The gloss stays, but then the color becomes virtually transfer proof. So you can kiss off your lips and you're not getting any of the color off. Some of the gloss will fade over time, but they're not drying. So. It's one of the most unique long wearing products I own and I love these. So I thought that's what e.l.f. had done and unfortunately they didn't. It does have that same cooling sensation when it goes on. It has a little bit of shine and this one never sets down and it just kind of melts off the lips very quickly. So. It's not drying, it doesn't look bad, it doesn't feel bad, but I just feel like it was a miss because there's no longevity of wear, it doesn't have as much glossy finish as I would want from a gloss, so I don't know. The other thing is, while they sent three colors, these colors are all, they all just look so much the same to me. And they feel, I feel like they get brighter and brighter on my lips. Like this one right here, when I wear that one on my lips, it continues to get brighter and brighter and brighter. And I'm like, uh, that's not the nude color that I put on. And then this one, again, kind of warm. They're all very warm. They all look almost the same on my lips. So I don't know. Just wasn't a win for me. However, the other product that was in that box is a huge win for me, and I'm actually wearing one as my liner today, and they are these new lip liners from e.l.f. They're called Love Triangle Lip Filler Liners. 
and I, I feel like they just kind of did a play on the actual shape of the liner. So the tip of it is like a triangle and it is a twist up. I found that these are super creamy and best of all, they're very long wearing. Now I said they're super creamy. They are, so they're not drying, but you do have to kind of maybe layer a couple of times. So they're not like a super soft crayon. They're not soft like the Smashbox ones. However, when you put them on, they do set and they stay put so well. I've really enjoyed them. I've enjoyed all of the colors. I am wearing this middle one today, which is mauve, and that's my lip liner paired with that Merit Lipstick Baby. All right, guys, so that wraps up this video. I hope that you enjoyed this, and if you have had your eye on any of these products, hopefully the information I shared with you today will be helpful. As always, I will leave a list of everything I talked about with purchase links in the description box below this video. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you next time. Bye.